This is your classic example where, like I, I've been saying, you know, think geometrically as much as you possibly can, but don't leave behind all your algebraic skills because they will serve you very well. And when you have a look at this, okay, what do we got? Um, I'm thinking about some modulus, right? The modulus of whatever this complex number is, what it's comprised of is complex number squared, conjugate squared, take the difference, okay? So, before we begin, what looks like a reasonable way to sort of start simplifying this algebraically? Any, any tips? Yeah, Raph. Okay, now Raph's nailed it in one. Maybe you didn't see this so quickly. This is a difference of squares, right? It's an a squared take away b squared, okay? Now, if you didn't see it as quickly as Raph did, like I did the very first time I met any question like this, uh, my thought was, well, that's x plus iy, right? And that's x minus iy, so I'm just going to substitute them in and just square them and then just see what happens, okay? It'll work, by the way. It'll just take another four or five lines and lots of opportunities for algebraic errors to creep in. Yeah. Difference of squares is smart. <coughs> Let's write it down. But the question is, why is difference of squares such a clever way to go? In fact, what clues did the question itself give you, apart from the squares themselves, the difference of squares is a better way to go. Any suggestions? Conjugate. They're conjugates, right? But why is that? What, what, what significance does that have to why difference of squares is useful? Okay, so because what's different between these two things is the imaginary part has gone plus or minus. Plus or minus. We know the reason why conjugates are useful is because when, um, when you combine them in lots of different ways, one part will disappear, right? The real part will vanish, or the imaginary part will vanish. Watch as each one takes its turn, okay? Z minus Z bar. Z take away its conjugate, right? This is X plus IY. Take away X minus IY, right? So you can see that I'm gonna have X take away X. The real part disappears, okay? And I get left with double uh, 2IY, double the imaginary part. Okay with that? Do you want me to do the extra line of working to show you? Okay. So that's fine. When you do this, when you add them, the plus and minus, the imaginary parts, they're going to cancel now, right? So you just get left with x plus x, double the real part, right? So this is uh, like so. Okay with that? So absolutely value greater than 4. And now you can see why they're stuck in a sneaky 4 there, right? Like why? was to get rid of this four. So now I can tidy this up. Uh, oops, that I should be there. What? Okay. Now we've come to the limit of where algebraic simplification can take us, right? Now I want to start getting towards a locus, right? I want a relationship, <coughs> excuse me, between x and y. I want a relationship, right? So um, how do you work out the modulus to this complex number? What's the formula for a modulus? I'll give you a hand. Yeah, no test. What is the real part of this? There's no real part. Right? Plus the imaginary part, right? Which is x, x y squared. Greater than one. Happy with that? So now I've got the square root of a square. So square root of square. <laughs> careful, careful. What's that? I'll give you a clue. It's not A. Plus minus absolute It's the absolute value of A, right? Why is it the absolute value of A? Because that's right. When you square it, you lose the sign, and then when you square it, you only get the positive. Okay, so hence, give me the positive value only. So what you're really getting out of this is this guy. You okay with that? Okay, now, we've used the definition of a modulus, but where do we go with that? Okay, now, remember, we use this strategy over and over again. When you look at a question, you're like, gross, I have no idea what to do with that. Okay, you think about simpler examples, right? So if I gave you this, oops, sorry. Most of us would know what to do with that, right? What would you do first? This is a region. What would you do? Yeah. I would take this as an equality, right? y equals x plus 1. And I would say the relationship between the inequality and the equation is, what is the relationship? 
this is just a line, right? But it's not just any line. It's the boundary of this guy, right? Do you agree with that? And in fact, y is greater than, so it'll be, it'll be above, okay? So you put your x plus one line in, and then you can say, all right, well now I just work out whether I'm in this side or in this side, and then I'll shade accordingly, right? So when I have a look at this, hmm, the boundary of this, this is a region that will be shaded, but the boundary will look like this. <coughs> you okay with that? Yeah. And then at this stage, can we split it up into two graphs? Okay, now I'm ready to split. Now I'm ready to split, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Now, again, we're not all that familiar with this, but if I took away the absolute value, actually, it's not something that's rocket science. Just x, y equals 1. I can divide both sides by x. By the way, why can I divide both sides by x? Because x, because x is not equal to 0. Because x can't possibly be equal to 0, right? Because 0 times something can't be equal to 1, right? So I, I can say that. That's fine. I know exactly what that looks like, right? So if this leads me here, where is this going to lead you? Plus or minus. It'll be like both versions. Plus or minus. Let's think about it. Simple case, right? In what cases, in what cases is that simply equal to this? When, it's, when x. it's when x and y are both positive. That's not the only place it'll do oh, it, right? Both if they're both negative, right? Because um, if, come back over here. If they're both positive, then the inside is positive, you'll just get xy. If they're both negative, the inside will also be positive, so you just get xy, right? So for, um, now by the way, we have a way of saying, by the way, when both x and y are positive, when we have about, you know, when we have our quadrants, how do we describe that spot? First, first. We would say first quadrant, right? First quadrant? Where's the spot where they're both negative? The, the Which, conveniently, is exactly where y equals 1 over x usually exists anyway. Yeah. You okay with that? So let's just write that down. Um, this is y equals 1 over x where x, y is greater than 0. Namely, the first and third quadrants. Okay. But then there's the other case, right? Where it's not just 1 over x, it's minus 1 over x. Where is that the case? In the second and fourth. It's in the second and fourth, but why the second and fourth? Because one is negative. In the second quadrant, right? You've got x negative and y positive. So the product will be negative, which is what gives you the negative case. And vice versa, in the fourth quadrant, you've got x positive and y negative. So again, only one of them is negative, so the product is negative. Excuse me. So we get the negative case. So I'm going to say that here. Where x, y is negative, namely the second and fourth quadrants. Okay, awesome. So now I'm ready to graph these boundaries, right? Am I including the boundaries or am I excluding them? Excluding. I'm excluding, right? Because you can see right up here, there's no equality there. It's not greater than or equal to 4, it's just greater than. Okay, so let's draw this thing. Yeah, you go over there, boundaries. No one wants you, okay? Sorry, buddy. Okay, so don't get overwhelmed by this. There's a lot on there. Let's just do it step by step. Remember, the first and third quadrants, they go together. Second and fourth quadrants go together. Let's just do it one step at a time. What does your intuition tell you? Hmm. Now, I'm going to pull you all the way back to this line here. This line here, okay? Think back in, like this is all, this is Cartesian terms here. Just think back to what this means in complex numbers, right? What is a modulus? What's the definition of a modulus? Distance from the origin, right? Distance from the origin. Now, what I'm measuring is the distance from the origin to this point. Distance from the origin to this point. And I want that distance to be bigger than one. 
I want it to be one or five or a hundred or anything like that, okay? So being that the origin is here, and I want big distances, not little ones, and here's my boundary. Which side of this boundary would you guess that I should be outside. on? I should be on the outside, right? Your intuition should tell you. I want distances that are bigger, okay? Let's confirm this, right? What I need is a point inside my boundary and a point outside just to really confirm that I know what I'm doing, okay? So for instance, here's a point on the boundary, right? What's a nice, easy point that's on this boundary? One, one, one. Now, we would usually say one, one, right? But this is not a Cartesian plane, right? So really I should say it's one plus i. This is one plus i, there. That's on the boundary, that's no use, don't bother testing that, I already know it's going to be excluded. Okay, pick a point for me, a nice easy point that's inside the boundary. Zero, zero. Zero. Oh, zero. <laughs> a zero, zero is not going to be any good, right? Or I should just say zero, right? Because complex plane, okay? Zero is no good because zero is not defined for any of these, right? So I can't input it. Can't input it, not going to be happy. Give me something else. Zero one plus i. Okay, so if one plus i is on, then... Seriously? That's, that's a lie. One plus half Rude. i. Seriously, is. That's not it. What? Still two else. Okay, one plus half i is on the inside. Before we finish, give me a nice easy point that's on the outside. Two, two. How about? Okay, now I'm just thinking first quadrant. Two plus two. I'm gonna go just straight up, and I don't need to appeal to fractions. I'm only appealing to fractions to fit in here. I'm just going to go 1 plus 2i. That's going to be outside, right? You go ahead and you test. On Monday morning, we'll confirm and we'll draw this thing together.